The IDEA procedures require that school districts provide written prior notice to the parents of the child whenever the local education agency proposes to initiate or change or refuses to initiate or change the identification, evaluation, or educational placement of the child or the provision of a free, appropriate public education to the child. The Individuals with Disabilities Education Act has both procedural and substantive requirements, and the procedural requirements are pretty uh, extensive, and some of them are pretty complicated, but one of the most important ones is prior written notice or written prior notice, whichever um, your state or your school district uses, it gets thrown around a lot and used interchangeably. But basically what it is, is that your school district is required, Julie, they're absolutely required to give parents in writing notice before they implement a change or a refusal to change the evaluation, identification, or provision of special education and related services to the child. That's the upshot. They have to let you know if they're gonna change something or if they're going to refuse to change something. And you know, on a practical level, Jen, I find that with parents with whom I work, that that term, prior written notice or written prior notice, somehow confuses people. Yeah, it does. Um, and it really is more simple than you would think, or with those words put together in the way that they're put together, somehow it causes confusion, it even for me. But really, it's exactly what you said, that they have to notice they have to notify the parents in advance mm -hmm. to any of those changes taking place in a, in a written format. And usually the way that parents are informed is at the IEP meeting or in the documents that come home from the IEP meeting either that day or several days afterwards. Sometimes more time than you'd like elapses, but they're supposed to get it to you within a certain period of time. When you get those documents, often that's when you're going to get your prior written notice or your written prior notice. And that's because most of the decisions that would be changing the child's program, education, evaluation, or identification of the child, or refusing to do so occur at an IEP team meeting, an individualized education program meeting. So that's the natural place that you would have someone put that into place. And, and so you can expect to see it there, but it's not necessarily required that those are the times when you're supposed to get it is with those documents. And you know, on a personal note, I, I've always thought of this part of the, um, with this part of the uh, the prior written notice being one of the more important aspects of what you need to be notified of. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as far as you're concerned, you're a special education attorney, I'm a special education advocate, it is often the way that this is not recorded mm -hmm. <laughs> or the confusion over what has been agreed to um, often leads sometimes to the misunderstanding of what has been documented. Definitely. And in fact, one of the things that parents need to understand is getting that prior written notice. And the prior is where the, the word gets confusing. I think that's the word that trips people up is that they're wondering prior to what? Mm -hmm. How are you going to give me written notice in advance of advance of what? Of you giving me written notice? It doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to some people. The prior is really prior to the change or prior to initiating the change or refusing to do so. And the reason is that's really your trigger as a parent, getting that prior written notice to disputing it if you want to. You you need to get that document that says we have decided that we're not going to do this or we've decided that we're going to do this even if you don't agree with us. And if as a parent you want to exercise your rights through some formal channel like mediation or due process, then you want to have had that prior written notice. Julie and I have found unfortunately over the years that often the document doesn't get filled out very well and we're going to go through some of the elements of what that should look like. And it's very often a parent will have asked for something at a meeting and it doesn't get recorded that it was refused or even that it was brought up. And so you want to make sure when you get your documents home, you're taking a look at that prior written notice and making sure that anything you requested or anything that the school district requ requested that was refused by the team or by you is documented right, right there. And you know, this is one of those areas where the devil is in the details. Specificity, specificity, specificity. It, three times fast. Three, well, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it needs to be very um, precise, uh, precise about what the plan is, is and why they're refusing or perhaps why they're agreeing to do what you're, everybody's agreed to do. You know, and it's a practical tip. If at a point in the meeting where you feel that you've reached an impasse where you're looking for something they don't want to give it or they're looking for something you don't agree to, at a point where you don't feel you're getting anywhere, it's a good time to say, well, please reflect on the prior written notice page that I've asked for it. Mm -hmm.